Okay, this is a video lecture two for chapter 13. So this is again, checkup corner cash flow from financing activities. Uh, this is a year, uh, one year to the next. Again, increases uh, are noted, decreases are noted in a parentheses. So 1100 in account payable, an increase, increase of di uh, dividend uh, payable as well. Uh, so this is the older year, this is the new year. Uh, let's see, bonds payable decreased uh, by 90000 Common stock uh, increased excess uh, of issue price over par value. Common stock uh, was an increase of 100000 And then retained earnings did increase as well. So when we look at this, uh, here's how we would write it. We would say 90000 decrease uh, paid to retired bonds. Cash received from issuing stock, common stock 120, and then cash paid for dividends 18,000. So then net cash flow from financing activities would be $12,000. So here's the uh, indirect method, the full statement of cash flows um, expanded, net income 108, depreciation 7, gain on sale of land 12,000, which was a decrease or a negative, a $9,000 um, uh, Change in current position, 8,000 decrease in inventories, positive, decrease uh, 3,200 in payables, 2,200 in expenses, decrease 5,000 income tax payable, 105,000. This is net cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investment activity, 72 minus 15 minus 60, so there's a 3,000 loss. Uh, from financing activities, it'll be 48,000. Minus fifty thousand, minus twenty-four thousand, which will give us a net for twenty-six thousand in financing activities. So the net increase in cash will be seventy-one five hundred. So this minus this minus this gives us a cash balance of twenty-six thousand, and a cash balance in December will be ninety-seven thousand five hundred. So whenever we look at decision making, free cash flow measures, the operating. Uh, Cash flow available to a com company to use after it purchases the property, plant, and equipment, PP&E, necessary to maintain its current operations. Free cash flow is computed as follows. Cash flow from operating activities uh, minus cash used to purchase plant, property, plant, equipment. So free cash flow will be um, subtract this minus subtracted the cash um, used to purchase will give us that bottom number. So free cash flow, so here's how we compute it. Free cash flow divided by sales, which is the ratio of free cash flow to sales. So let's take a look at that. Positive free cash flow is considered favorable. A company that has free cash flow is available to fund growth and acquisitions, retire debt, purchase treasury stock, and pay dividends. <clears throat> a company with no free cash flow may have limited financial flexibility, potentially leading to liquidity problems. So these are all red flags that you'll start to see. So here's an example, here's Fizz. Um, so then year one, year two, year three, and then notice it did increase. Um, our sales did increase as well, a little bit slower. And then here was cash used to purchase. So we, do, we still have quite a bit um, in sales and you know whenever you're looking at that. So here's what this looks like. Um, free cash flow is, again, it, it's, Sorry, I gotta let the dog in. Year one to year three, year one to year three as well. 6.3 and did increase to 9.4 over a three year span. And you, you want that number to be a higher percentage. Wait, hang on, do you want it to be higher? Um, no, you want it to be lower because you want it to be, um, you know, a lower percentage, okay? No, you don't. Actually, yeah, you do, okay. All right, so moving on. Um, so this is Appendix 1. A spreadsheet may be used to prepare the statement of cash flows. However, whether or not a spreadsheet worksheet is used, the concept presented in this chapter are not affected. So here's the worksheet. End of period worksheet for statement of cash flows indirect method. This is also in your book, so you can take a look at that as well. Um, so here's the balances, the debit and credits, and then here's the balance afterwards. And here it looks like are the uh, the um, adjustments that need to be made. The statement, the steps in preparing this spreadsheet 
worksheet are as follows. Step one lists the title of each balance sheet account in the account column for each balance sheet account. Enter its balance in the two balance columns. Place the credit balances in parentheses, that's two and three. Add both of the balance columns, um, which should total zero, okay? Step four, analyze the change during the year in each non-cash account to determine its net increase or decrease and classify the change as affecting cash flows from operating activities, investing activities, financing activities, or non-cash investing and financing activities. Step five, indicate the effect of the change on cash flows by making entries in the transaction column. Step six, after all non-cash accounts have been analyzed, Enter the net increase, decrease in cash during the period. Step seven, add the debit and credit transaction columns. The totals should be equal. So here's an example. This is a direct method. Cash received from customers, cash payments for merchandise, cash payments for operating expense, cash payments for interest, cash payments for income taxes, and the net cash flow from operating activities. So the cash flow from investing and financing activities section of the statement of cash flows are exactly the same under both the direct and indirect methods. The amount of net cash flow from operating activities is also the same, but the manner in which it is reported is different. Depreciation expenses not adjusted or reported as part of cash flows from operating activities. This is because depreciation expense does not involve a cash outflow. The gain on sale of land is also not adjusted and is not reported as part of cash flows from operating activities. This is because the cash flow from operating activities is determined directly rather than by reconciling net income. The cash proceeds from the sale of land are reported as an investing activity. So here's an example. Sales adjusted to cash received from customers, cost of goods, cash payment for merchandise. So operating expense, uh, depreciation expense, nothing operating other operating expense will go from cash payments for operating expense. Gain on loss of sale of land, nothing happens. Interest expense, cash payments for interest. Income tax expense is cash payments for income tax. Net income, net cash flow from operating activities. So cash received from customers, so the income statement rundle. Uh, this is going back to slide 24, report sale of 1.18 million. To determine the cash received from customers, the 1.18 million is adjusted for any increases or decrease in accounts receivable. So sales reported on the income statement, and then it says any plus decreases in account receivable minus increases in accounts receivable, which is going to equal cash received from customers. So sales is 1.18 million. Increase in account receivable is a decrease for 9,000. So cash received from customers will be 1 million. $171,000, okay? So cost of goods was 790000 To determine the cash payment for merchandise, the 790000 is adjusted for any increases or decreases in inventories and account payable. So cost of goods reported to the income statement plus increases of inventory or decrease of inventory and plus decreases in account payable or minus increase in accounts payable. That's going to equal cash payments for merchandise. So cost of goods, decrease in inventory of 8000 decrease in account payable, 3200 added cash payments for merchandise, $785,200. So here's another. So the 8000 decrease in inventories indicates that merchandise sold exceeded the cost of the merchandise purchased by 8000 In other words, the cost of goods sold in includes 8,000 merchandise sold from inventory that did not require a cash outflow during the year. The 3,200 decrease in accounts payable indicates that cash payments from merchandise were $3,200 more than the purchase on account during 22 year, two year 18 or 2018. The income statement of Rundell Inc. slide 26 reports total operating expenses of 203,000, which includes appreciated expense of 7,000. Because depreciation expense does not require a cash outflow, it is omitted from the cash payments for operating expenses. To determine the cash payments for operating expenses, the other operating expenses, including depreciation of 196000 which was 203 minus 7000 are adjusted for any increase or decrease in accrued expenses payable. So here's what this looks like. Operating expense other than depreciation. 
increase prepaid, decrease prepaid, prepaid expenses, and add decrease in accrued expense payable minus increase in accrued expense payable. So that equals cash payment for operating expenses. So 196,000 might um, take away 2,200. Uh, so that'll give us nine uh, cash payments operating so it's be nine one one hundred ninety three thousand eight hundred dollars okay so the the income statement for Rundell Inc on slide 24 reports a gain of twelve thousand on the sale of land the sale of land is an investing activity thus the proceeds from the sale which include the gain are reported as part of cash flows from investing activities interest expense um, 8,000 to determine the cash payment for interest. The 8,000 is adjusted for any increases or decreases in interest payable. So interest expense plus decrease in interest payable or minus increase in interest payable. So notice all of these payables are accounted for very similarly cash payment, which will equal cash payments for interest. The comparable balance sheet of rental uh, in slide 27 in case no indicates no interest payable. This is because the interest expense on the bonds payable is paid on June 1 and December 31. Because there is no interest payable, no adjustments of the interest expense of 8,000 is necessary. The income statement of Rundell in slide 26 report income tax expense of 83,000. To determine the cash payments for income taxes, the 83,000 is adjusted for any increases or decreases in income tax payable. So here's the very similar to the payables we've looked at before and then we arrive at our cash payments for income taxes. So 83 plus 500 cash payment for income taxes 83500. So here's this expanded for the direct method. So take a look at these. It is in your books so total at the bottom uh, 97500 and then right up right down here uh, for the reconciliation 105 100,500. Okay. So take a look at that, study that, look at it and uh, make sure you understand those different components. Okay, so that's the end of this uh, slide. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. But most importantly, if you have any missing work, please get that work turned in to me. Thank you. Have a good day.